Hello, welcome. Um, it's been quite a ride. So this is like the final night before uh, opening day. So glad to spend it all with you all. I, um, it's a, a weird story to how I came to be here. I grew up in LA where um, we have the best sports announcers on the planet. I grew up listening to Chick Hearn and Vince Scully and that was my dream. I wanted to be a sports announcer. I wanted to replace Vince Scully. There's only one problem. So in the meantime, while Vin Scully continues to be the announcer for the Dodger, <laughs> I have uh, managed to uh, find my way into the movie business. And it's been a great journey. And certainly in terms of the movie business in general, people ask me a lot in terms of how I got into it and how I got to where I am. And it really was about finding a way in that is where you have your best skill set and what is your entry point. So for me, it was originally accounting where I worked at Arthur Anderson in their entertainment group. And then I got into finance and, and working in planning and developing business plans for Disney during some of the high growth period right after Michael Eisner and Jeffrey Kassenberg and team had gone there. And then found myself in a number of different opportunities and occasionally taking a big risk, like when I went to Revolution with Joe Roth to help launch that company, which was a great learning opportunity for me, um, where I got to work side by side with one of the, the greats in the movie industry who unfortunately passed away recently from cancer, Tom Sherrick, who um, has been one of my closest friends and mentors for the last 15 years, and a great opportunity to work with him at Revolution and with Joe Roth. And then when Brad Gray came to Paramount in 2005, said, that certainly in terms of the way Paramount had approached the movie business, it had been a very risk averse enterprise and looking to take more risks, expand the studio globally and, and asked me to come with him to help him do that. And certainly it's been, uh, it's been an exciting ride and, and we've done some movies that have been big commercial successes like the Transformers franchise We've done some movies that have been great critical successes. Like this year we had Nebraska nominated for several Oscars and a movie made in black and white. So certainly ranging the perspective in terms of what types of movies you could make. Um, but that brings us to here tonight. And uh, a couple years ago after the year that Black Swan was directed for a number of Oscars, Darren Aronofsky, who's the filmmaker, who's made a number of very ambitious films in the past and a very talented filmmaker, he had had a passion to make the movie Noah. And it was something that had inspired him when he was in middle school. He had won a contest and had read a poem about Noah at the United Nations. And it really inspired him to be a storyteller and then a, a writer and, and a filmmaker. And so now that he had had such great commercial success with Black Swan, felt like now was his time to take a big leap and, and try and get a studio to, to finance this ambitious project he had from, based upon Noah. So Adam Goodman, who is the president of production for Paramount Pictures, whose job it is to develop scripts and develop movies and, and to put those together, came into my office one day and said, Darren had this script and it's a, a very complicated, very ambitious, very complicated script. And he really loved it as a script and thought Darren was an incredible filmmaker and asked me what I thought of it, given that my beliefs and being a Christian and how I thought people were gonna connect to the movie. Naively, I thought people were going to be excited by that idea. Now I'm gonna jump to President's Day 2014, and almost like running a campaign, I've been get, I get daily updates of who's saying what and what's happening in the world. So on President's Day, I woke up to this. Katie Martin Kelly, who oversees our publicity, sends me a note first thing in the morning and says a uh, group called Faith Driven Consumer is gonna issue a press release shortly that says 98% of Christians are unhappy with the movie Noah. I'm like, wow, 98%. 
I didn't realize I could bring people together quite that effectively. And so I said, wow. I said, how about you give me the context and the actual question? Because it seems a little surprising because we actually had been doing a significant amount of research and testing and, and outreach in terms of getting feedback. And the Barna Group, who's one of the leading groups and does polling for religious trends in the United States had been working with us and the National Research Group, who's one of the leading researchers in, in the movie industry, had been doing research with us. And both of them had shown between 80-85% of Christians had a significant level of interest in the movie. So this was a little confusing. But then I received what the actual survey said. It said, have you heard about the controversy swirling around the upcoming blockbuster movie Noah, soon to be released in theaters on March 28th? They did get the date right, I appreciated that. The $125 million epic has hit rough seas with many key faith-based audiences. Word has come out that, that the studio has replaced the themes of the Bible with their own ideas. So then they went on to ask the question, as a faith-driven consumer, are you satisfied with a biblically-themed movie designed to appeal to you, which replaces the biblical core message with one created by Hollywood. <laughs> Surprisingly, 2% of the people said yes. <laughs> so, about 10 days later, we, uh, or about a week later, we were participating in a panel with the National Religious Broadcasters, and through that panel and the screening of the film for them, they came to us and said, look, a number of people have approached us about the potentials for boycotts and how people feel about this movie and, and how people are responding, and they came to us and said, we really think you should put an advisory on the front of the movie and I said, well, actually, uh, we've now done enough testing of this movie to realize that, in fact, people need to know it not after they've purchased their movie ticket. We're not looking to trick them into purchasing a movie ticket, thinking they're getting something they're not. I said, why don't we put it on the marketing material so that way people know when they are seeing the movie that what the movie's intention is. So together we put out a press release that said, this is not the literal execution of the story of Noah from Genesis. That we encourage everyone to go and read Genesis 6 through 9 in preparation. It will probably take you five to 10 minutes, depending on how fast a reader you are. But the ambition of this movie was to make entertainment and to make art inspired by the biblical story. And Darren Aronofsky and Ari Handel, who had been working on this script for a long time, had truly immersed themselves in the scripture and in other writings and other Jewish writings to really ground themselves in the story. But then, once you go back and read the story, you'll see it would be tough to make it into a dramatic motion picture. After Noah gets the animals on the ark, they float around about a year. There's no recorded conversation. <laughs> then they land, God gives them their blessing, and then Noah, dealing with some amount of stress, I guess, from having watched the rest of the world come to an end, gets drunk and gets in a fight with one of his children and kicks them out of the family. So, for better or worse, some elements of that will be in the movie. Interesting, from the research screenings we've done, many people did not realize that Noah gets drunk. So, spoiler alert. <laughs> you will see a drunk Noah in this film. So, um, but as we've gone through this, today, uh, there was an amusing cartoon in the Los Angeles Times or on their website, I will accept at this point, I can't differentiate between the actual paper and what I receive on my iPad. So if you guys can put up this cartoon that showed today. They got my hair right, but I feel like I've lost some weight in the last few years, so that, I don't think I look quite that big. So as you can see, it says, 
I see Noah's releasing a dove to search for dry land, but the caption says that's not Noah. That's a studio executive sending out the disclaimer that this is not the literal story of Noah. And you can see up there, for those of you who can't quite read that, it says, it's just a movie. So I wouldn't say it's just a movie, but I think the key that we've definitely been wrestling with is getting our arms around what is okay. And when you're making a movie inspired by the biblical story, what is, what is okay? What is art? What is our opportunity as storytellers and filmmakers and studios? And I think the key thing about the announcement that we put out was the confirmation, which is what I felt when Adam first showed me the script, which was there is no question there's a lot of creativity in the film. And there's no question some people won't find the story compelling to them. But at the same time, I did believe that it was consistent with the biblical themes, and fortunately, most people we've screened it to have agreed. And ultimately, as I said, relative to this press release, this organization came alongside us and, and said the same. And I think that's been a key driving force in terms of the movie and the marketing of the movie, is our goal is not to trick people. Our goal is not to have people buy tickets for this film expecting something it's not. It is a it is a creative work, it's a work of art. It asks the question, did mankind deserve a second chance? And Noah goes through that debate and struggle in the film. But I hope if you make it to the end, and some of you may not, we definitely have people who find things in it that, that are hard for them to process versus what their expectation is or their beliefs, and, and that is certainly, our goal is not to upset people, our goal is hopefully to engage people that the amount of conversation and dialogue that has taken place has been incredible, and in the mainstream press, that USA Today last week featured an op-ed from the American Bible Society that says the Bible does not provide a lot of details about Noah. We know he's a godly man living in an ungodly time. There aren't a lot of details, so some things have to be left to the imagination, and that imagining can be the fodder for art. Whether you become a fervent fan or a vocal detractor of the film, their hope is that its very existence sparks people's interest, not just in watching the film, but also talking about it and digging into the Bible for yourself, reading the story, and potentially engaging with others. Yesterday, in the New York Times, in the second page of the art section, there's a full color ad for Noah and as opposed to having a cross promotion with Mountain Dew, as we do on Transformers, we have a cross promotion with the Bible app. So there is a full page ad in the New York Times suggesting to people download the Bible app, get content on Noah, read the story in Genesis. So you have to save that applause till 942. <laughs> so it's been a very interesting journey. I was naive enough to think that it would be less complicated than this. It has been a daily challenge in terms of um, responding to a number of people who've criticized the movie, the majority of which who hadn't seen it. Um, the most recent and most vocal was Glenn Beck, who some of you probably heard before. He's a fairly well-known, very conservative, radio talk personality who last Friday was very upset by the Hollywood Reporter review that was posted on the Drudge Report. And in the film, Darren has made the creative decision that he refers to God as the creator. That is the way that Noah interacts with him. That's the way Noah refers to him. But it's completely a direct and very personal relationship with God that Noah has throughout the movie. But in the movie, God is referred to as the creator. But in the review, it said... This movie does not acknowledge God. It does not use the name of God. So he was very upset. How do you have a Noah movie that doesn't include God? So he had committed to convincing people not to see the movie. So at this point, I've, uh, we offered the Pope a chance to see the film. He ultimately declined. However, I did take Russell Crowe and the director to the Vatican to listen to the Pope speak a week ago, a Wednesday. 
Um, so I figured, why not? I would reach out to Glenn Beck. Um, his radio show had aired Friday morning. We reached out Friday at lunchtime. They said he was actually on a plane to LA. Um, and they called back and said, okay, well, if you guys are crazy enough to show it to him, he's happy to come watch it. So last Saturday, he sat in this theater and watched the film. And ultimately, he agreed that, and I said to him, I said, I am the knucklehead who both fought to make this movie here and who suggested you watch it. Um, I don't expect you to love it, but if you're gonna criticize it, I'd at least like you to criticize what's actually in the movie, not what other people have reported on. He said, that's fair. That's certainly something that he's dealt with a lot in his career and certainly appreciated that opportunity. Um, and then the next day he posted a, a review where he, his caption was, Babylonian Chainsaw Massacre takes place in the new film Noah. So um, the movie is rated PG-13. There is a significant amount of intensity as the filmmaker depicts a world of chaos and depravity that ultimately is a world that God decides to wipe out most of the people. Um, there was another conversation about the impact of environmentalism on the film, and I think the one thing we always felt like is it's a symptom in the movie of mankind's depravity, that mankind no longer values each other, doesn't value God's creation, doesn't value much at all, and I think that is an element of the movie that also, out of context, people had been criticizing the movie based upon early drafts of the script or their impression of what it would be. So. I don't expect everybody to love the movie. It certainly has generated much more attention that, and controversy than I expected. But I think, in the end, the most constructive part of it has been the amount of conversation that has taken place over the last month about the Bible and the story of Noah and the book of Genesis. And hopefully, um, many of you will find the movie an opportunity to engage with other people that you haven't had that opportunity in a long time. Last year, there was a survey that came out about the status of religion in the United States, and the biggest growing group was people with no religious beliefs, and many of those people are young males, males in their teens and 20s, a group that will find this movie very engaging. So, um, oh, now they're gonna kill me because I'm forgetting their new name. What's the name of the people who used to be called Campus Crusade? Them. So they are sponsoring a program to invite college kids for Christians to take non-Christians with them to see this movie because they did feel like it was a great opportunity to engage with people in a conversation you won't otherwise normally have. So um, we're gonna do two things. First, we'll pause to do a little bit um, of fun. Monday night, uh, we were at the exhibition convention in Las Vegas where we roll out new movies for the year. Uh, so you'll see a little taste of the movies we have coming out for the next 12 months. I have to ask that nobody photograph or record any of the images or video or audio. Those of you who are watching this taped later or streamed now, you will now be seeing a blank screen because we many of these images, these visual effects are often temporary. A lot of this is, is not finished, but we just wanted to give you a little peek into uh, what we have going on here at Paramount over the next 12 months. So we'll roll this tape and then we'll spend a few minutes having some conversation and then we'll try and get the movie started on uh, roughly on time. All right, if we can dim the lights and roll the video, please. <laughs> 